Je leo hii tumekongamana hapa UDA kama uongozi wa UDA kiongozwa na chair person wetu Gavana Cecil Barile tuko vile vile pia na kiongozi wa walio wengi katika bunge mheshimiwa Kimani Chungwa na wabunge ambao tutawapatia nafasi waongee hapa na maseneta ambao wamejiunga na sisi leo hapa leo tumekuja kwanza kongamana na jamii yetu ambayo inaishi nchi za ugaibuni nchi katika nchi za ugaibuni na inaitwa diaspora na tuko hapa tumewakaribisha sana mnajua jamii hiyo ya diaspora ilisimama kidete na rais wetu William Samoei Ruto na naibu wake Rigathi Gashagwa wakati wa uchaguzi. So leo tumekuja tu kwanza kufungamana nao, kusemezana nao na kuangalia ni jinsi gani chama chetu cha UDA kinaenda kuhakikisha kwamba tumetimiza ahadi ambazo uh, tulipeana wakati wa campaign kwa masuala ya diaspora, mambo ya passports mambo ya mambo yao ya kuremit pesa katika nchi uh, yetu ya, ya, ya Kenya na mambo mengine ambayo tumekubaliana na na mengine ambayo tayari yameanza kufanywa na rais wetu mpendwa um, so tutawapatia pia nafasi wataweza kutuongelesha lakini vile vile tumekuja hapa pia kukashifu yale maandamano ambayo yalifanyika jana yakiongozwa na wale <coughs> eh, wenzetu wa kule azimio tungependa kusema kama chama kwamba sisi kama serikali tunafanya yote yawezekanavyo kuhakikisha kwamba tumesaidia nchi hii imerudi mahali ilikuwa mwaka wa 2030 lakini tunarekeshwa nyuma na ile maandamano ambayo sio ya amani uliona jana wakibomboa physical infrastructure ile super highway yetu ile express highway yetu imebomolewa tunasema kwamba Raila Odinga sio lazima upoteze maisha ya vijana wetu sio lazima uharibu mali ya watu wetu ndio uonekane kwamba unaweza ongoza Kenya tafadhali Raila kuna mambo ambayo hayezi badilika na inafaa tuangalie ukweli jambo la kwanza ni lazima ukubali kwamba William Ruto ndio rais 2022 hadi 2032 hiyo tukubaliane hiyo kwa hiyo haiwezi badilika kwa sababu IBC ilishamtambua kama rais wa jamhuri yake so hata ukifanya maandamano kiasi gani usijifiche nyuma ya kuandamana tibei ya unga imepanda bei ya maisha na gharama maisha imepanda dunia nzima these are global problem and therefore upatie rais wetu nafasi aweze panga serikali yake aweze saidia wananchi wa Kenya and therefore tunasema kwamba tunakashibu vilivyo na tunasema hatutazidi kuruhusu mambo haya yaendelee tumekuwa very tolerant tumeweza ongea lakini sasa tumepanga tukasema kwamba lazima tusaidie wanabiashara wetu ambao biashara yao inaribiwa kule Kitengela na nchi yote ni lazima tusaidie wale vijana ambao wanapoteza maisha na tumeweka mikakati ya kutosha kuhakikisha jambo kama hilo ambalo lilifanyika jana halitafanyika tena so eh, chairperson wetu ataweza peana official statement ya chama Alafu leader wa majori yataongea tuwe na mtu mmoja kutoka katika nchi za ugaibuni alafu viongozi wetu wote watasema neno angalau waweze kashifu utendo hilo asante thank you very much uh, good evening everyone and the members of the media uh, this is the statement by the UDA party on the heinous atrocities observed during maandamano yesterday the 12th of July 2023 Our attention has been drawn by the orgy of violence leading to death and wanton destruction of property resulting from protests called by the Azimio leader Raila Odinga. UDA party condemns in the strongest terms possible their abhorrent acts of violence and the destruction of property perpetrated in the name of protest. We note with concern that unlike before when the well orchestrated violence was witnessed in some predictable parts of the country the perpetrators of this heinous crimes imported the mayhem to other parts of the country it concerns us that the protests and acts of hooliganism were well organized 
and exported to parts of Makweni, Machakos, Nyeri, Kirinyaga, and Kisi, which have traditionally remained calm, but where violence and death were reported. Overall, the protests resulted in the following. One, nine lives were lost in Lolongo and Kitengela. Two, destruction and looting of Eastmart and Quickmart supermarkets in Kitengela and Lolongo. Three, attack on the Kitengela chief's camp. Four, more than 36 injured and hospitalized. Five, KEPSA has estimated that Kenya is losing, on average, three billion every day of violence out of the violent demonstrations. Three, six, deliberate attack on the country's critical infrastructure, Pika Superhighway and Nairobi Expressway. The intention was to close down the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. And then blatant looting of businesses within Nairobi CBD. And eight, we saw as neo MPs actually celebrate the destruction and the violence that we witnessed. Today. <coughs> this state of anarchy is not about the cost of living anymore, but one person who has refused to accept his election laws. Although the constitution allows Kenyans, every Kenyan to peacefully picket while unarmed, what we have witnessed in the country cannot in any way be described as peaceful protest and picketing. What happened in parts of the country on Wednesday was pure economic sabotage by known political mercenaries with ulterior motives aimed at reversing the upward economic trajectory that has been driven by the Kenya Kwanzaa administration. It is sad that as a country, we have allowed Mr. Odinga to run amok by farming violence any time he's defeated in an election. The latest episode of the violence in the guise of protesting the rising cost of living was one of the many evil schemes by the opposition leader and his sponsors to bulldoze his way into government and to ensure that the transformation agenda by, the, by President William Ruto is neutral. As he has been described before, Mr. Odinga has lived up to his re reputation of being the lord of violence by always sponsoring violence while rubbing his hands in glee as people lose their lives. The country must stop treating Mr. Odinga, his sponsors, and the perpetrators of the attack with King's gloves and instead letting bear the full consequences of his murderous acts. What Mr. Odinga and his allies are doing is tantamount to terrorism against the very own people he purports to be fighting for. Section 2 of the Prevention of Terrorism Act defines terrorism as unlawful use of violence or threat of use of violence with intent to advance a political, religious, ideological, or other such cause and includes any unlawful use of violence. It is therefore clear that as neo leaders behind the wanton destruction of property and acts of lawlessness and loss of lives are guilty of terrorism and must be held to account. We ask the government, machinery, law enforcement, and judicial officials to take decisive action on those found culpable for these barbaric acts of violence. Thank you very much. Uh, I now ask the majority leader of the National Assembly, Honorable Kimani Shoma, to add on to the Thank you, members of for the states, and maybe just to re-emphasize that indeed, as a party and uh, the Kenya Panzer Coalition, we have indicated that Mr. Odinga is living true to his character and name as a lord of violence and the master of anarchy in this country. To wish to state that uh, what we have seen 
and what has been christened as protests, picketing, and demonstrations over the cost of living have nothing to do with peaceful protests, have nothing to do with peaceful demonstrations, nor picketing, but what we are now witnessing as a country is a campaign of anarchy and economic sabotage that is sponsored by the masters of state capture, who to date are yet to believe that their puppet in the last general elections lost the election. And they now seek a hand in the new Kenya Kwanzaa administration through blackmail, anarchy, and bloodshed. I wish to pose the question to them. Both the Lord of Violence, Mass of Anarchy, and his sponsors, who are well known, if you purport to be protesting on behalf of the people over the state of the economy and the high cost of living, how do you mitigate that? by sabotaging the same economy? How are you dealing with economic challenges to the ordinary Mwanaichi by stopping that Mwanaichi from going around their day-to-day -day hassles through this, this campaign of economic sabotage and anarchy? How does the destruction of our economic activities witnessed yesterday and the days before deal with the cost of living? It is quite clear that after every election, Mr. Odinga has found it fit to use bloodshed and anarchy to negotiate himself into power. He is now joined by his sponsor, who to date is here to believe, as I said, is not in power, and his puppet never got anywhere close to power. And you can see the hands of the sponsor in the activation and mobilization of Mungiki gangs yesterday. If you speak to residents of Kitangala and Mlolongo, they will tell you there were mobilized gangs of Mungiki. And the sponsor of Mr. Odinga has been a commander of that Mungiki gang for years known by Kenyans. You have seen the leaders of Mungiki standing like armies or like generals in an army behind Mr. Odinga in all his public engagements. And that is why we flinch so highly today to tell Mr. Odinga that your campaign of anarchy, your campaign of bloodshed and economic sabotage will not go very far. Kenyans know you, Kenyans know your sponsor, and you must be dealt with decisively. That is why we have called on our government to deal with Mr. Odinga, his sponsor, and all the other economic saboteurs with the full force of the law, and nobody should be spared. Not Mr. Odinga, not his sponsor, not the marauding gangs of Mungiki and other goons that they have mobilized. Nobody should be spared. Lastly, we have all witnessed the losses that this country suffered yesterday. From young children who had to suffer <coughs> because people are running into schools. To students and young people yesterday who could not make it to their schools. All in the guise, as I said, of peaceful demonstrations. There was nothing peaceful in the demonstrations. Mr. Odinga has no history of ever holding any peaceful demonstration anywhere in this country. And therefore we want to tell him, since we know you, Mr. Odinga, since we know the intent of your sponsor, 
and we know what campaign you have engaged in. Spare the Kenyan children from the pain that you are taking them through. We dare ask to Mr. Odinga and his sponsor, how much more bloodshed do you want to see? On the 7th of July last week, six Kenyans lost their lives. Yesterday we hear about seven Kenyans lost their lives. Nine Kenyans. How many more Kenyans do you want to see dead, Mr. Odinga? For you to get what you are looking for, <coughs> in the name of Anuzo Mkate, or a share in government, or a hand in government, to be able to cover up the massive looting that you supervised your sponsors carry out in this country in the run-up to the last elections. And Kenyans know them. And because they have been asking what is government doing, we want to tell Kenyans to be patient. Government is doing what it ought to do. And neither Mr. Odinga nor his sponsor, nor those who are engaged in state capture, and looting of our economy will use violence, bloodshed, and anarchy to derail government from pursuing them or derail government from reviving the economy that they destroyed. In closing, let me say, Mr. Odinga and Mr. Kenyatta, you know it is you two that got this country to where it is today. Give President William Ruto the time and the space to fix your mess. He has the ability and capacity to fix that mess, and he will. And as Kenya Kwanza leaders, we are here to reaffirm our commitment to ensuring that the country is peaceful and in supporting the current administration to get our economy to where it ought to be. Adina <laughs> Mengina. Let me welcome uh, Mr. Ireni, who is a representative of the Kenya Kwanza and UDA diaspora team uh, in the US. With the tallest member of parliament, I guess, uh, from, from where our chairperson leads the uh, M County. But uh, my residence currently is in Minnesota, and we came as a team uh, from all the states and diaspora to come and first and foremost show some support and uh, be very thankful. Uh, before I start with our protocols, uh, our chairperson, the majority leader, uh, Secretary General, the members of Parliament, uh, the Senators who are here, as well as all the other leaders and uh, uh, the Secretariat of the UDA, and you, the press, we want to thank you for this opportunity to give us and discuss a few things. First and foremost, we came here as a team to thank His uh, Excellency the President and uh, the Kenya Kwanza government. They did promise a lot of things that we've seen that have been delivered. And these things have actually not been told out there uh, to the majority of our diasporans. So we, what we see on social media is very different. And we can all attest, uh, I landed here yesterday at 6.25 a.m. with the plane, half of them were tourists. We were just very few Kenyans. And they're all coming to Kenya. So they know there's something about Kenya and how the government is running that is, uh, that's working. 